how to write a professional CV, especially for this healthcare assistant role. Okay, so first of all, what is CV? CV is just a document that summarizes your career history and sells your experience. Okay, you know, it's the first thing, is the first thing that your employer will see. So they will make their impression of who you are depending on your CV. Okay, so it's very important that whatever you write in your CV, you keep it accurate and relevant to the role you're applying for. Okay, so that means before you, before you start applying for your CV, you must have gone through the job description of the role you're applying so that you make sure that you tell all your skills in accordance to the role you're applying so that it will fit in. Okay, so having mentioned what CV is all about, I will quickly give us some tips or some guides to preparing a good CV. And after that, I will show us the example of um, a template, CV template, so you can see how it is and draft your own immediately. Okay. The first guideline for writing your CV is making sure that it is specific to the role you're applying for. Okay, so assuming you did business management in school or you did accounting and you're applying for this healthcare role, you know that you have to adjust some of the languages that you use. You, you won't be using marketing languages. You have to put things like being compassionate, being caring, you know, the skills. You, that's why it's important to look at the job description so that you make sure that it's specific to the role you're applying for. Okay, another point is to make sure that it is relevant. relevant. Okay. You have to outline your achievements or your competencies that is in line with the role you're applying for. If there are some work experiences that you've gathered, some training that you've done as regards to the role that you're applying for, you have to pen it down in your CV. You need to make sure that it's not more than two pages. You use headings to highlight sections. So you make it easier to see, like the first heading, if it's profile, you write profile at the top and write based on that. Next one, skills and experience, you write based on that. Recent work history, previous work history, qualification, and the rest of them, okay? So I will be showing us my own um, CV sample, okay? And how I arranged it. Okay, so first of all, you see my name, mobile number, and my email address on the screen. Then followed by my personal profile. Because this is job I'm seeking from my own country to another country. So I felt it's important to include my personal profile, where I will state where I'm coming from, my state of origin, the nationality. Okay, and... Um, I also included the languages that I speak and my Skype number. The reason why I included it was that during my own time, the agency that recruited me, they told me that the interview would be through the Skype. So I included my Skype ID in my CV. Okay? So, um, some people do attach their, they, their age, their marital status, but that one is not necessary. Okay, there is no need for you to include your date of birth or your marital status because it's not necessary. Like, there is, as long as you are up to 18 years and you're not less than 18 years and you're applying for a job, you'll stand the chance to get it. And nobody will discriminate you based on your age. So, assuming that maybe you're 40-something or 50-something, you don't have to feel that you're too old for the job, no. Nobody will discriminate you, and so it's not even important for you to write it there. Same goes with your marital status. Whether you're single or married, nobody has the right to discriminate you based on that. Okay? So, after my personal profile, the next thing was um, career objectives. Okay? So, in this career objective, some people call it personal statement or short summary of your professional profile. Just a little summary about yourself, about your career, okay? So that's the next one, career objective. 
so it usually show your commitment to your job okay or your commitment to the role you are applying for okay so you have to bear in mind that this is not supposed to be more than 50 words okay so anything you're putting in your summary your career objective it shouldn't be more than 50 words okay so another one is your personal skills so the next one is um your personal skills okay mind you since you're applying for this role even if you are not in health like you didn't do any health related course you're not a nurse you have to make sure that the skills you're putting there will relate to the job you are applying for so that's why you need to go through the job description okay because when you're talking about personal skills there should be things like uh, good interpersonal and relationship skills ability to motivate and direct sorry that's my baby in the background so you talk about things like you are a fast learner you are very hard working you work alongside with others you are an excellent observer you are a good communicator you know stuff like that you're very caring you know the next one here is um working experience working slash professional experience so this one you have to write it in reverse chronological order that is from the most recent one downwards okay so you start from your recent experience okay and you write it down so assuming that um maybe you are a nurse under this working and professional experience you write the name of the facility where you've worked the city the date of employment you include the hospital bed capacity job position the units you worked and um, the job specification okay but if you are not a nurse just under your working or professional experience any experience that you've had at all as a person write it there and also you see why it's important for you to do one of online health courses so that you will add your qualification there and it will be a qualification that relates to health okay so i will i will do another video on on free online courses there are a whole lot the of link them. so that you can go and do some free online training with your phone and download your certificate so that you can add it to your cv next one here is um your education and qualification also you write this one from most recent one okay so if you have any certificates that you got from your education so you have to include it as well so another thing to include is your educational background qualification and certificates okay so this one too you have to write it according to most recent all right any certificate that you have you attach it there okay you see how i did mine so the next thing here is additional courses attended so if there is any free maybe any health courses that you've attended or anything that relates to health at all you have your certificate you also need to include it okay then the next thing is um hobbies but this one is optional you can decide not to include it but if you know, feel that your hobby is maybe related to the role you're applying for it's also an advantage to include it but if not, you can do without it. Okay? So the next is your referees. So at least you need to have two referees. Okay? To include. But it's also optional. You can say referees upon requests. It depends on you. Whichever way you want to do it is still acceptable. Okay? So guys, you have to um, prepare your CV. Okay? make sure that it's representing you well because your prospective employer is what they see when they read your cv it tells them everything about you okay so represent yourself very well read the job description know the role you're applying to okay template so here with me so if we open this template now this one you see the person's name with the phone number address and um email so the person started with summary okay and this summary now is talking about her and her career and everything 
So next is experience, then skills, education, additional information. So it's very simple to prepare. Okay, you can also browse it online and see some other templates. Okay, so write your CV using this format and make sure that when you're printing it out, you're printing it in PDF format or Microsoft Word format. Okay, so that it will be easy to open because if you don't use this format and you send it to your prospective employ employers, they may not be able to download it. So you need to know that it should be in PDF format. Make sure it's not more than two pages. So I wish you the best. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload, you get to see it. Okay? I'm here to share information. Subscribe and be informed. Thank you. Bye.